Hello. Good uh, afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Nacho Alvaro. I'm here today with my colleague, David Bordas. Um, I'm the head of uh, Data Technologies and Analytics at Minsight. David is one of our uh, lead uh, big data architect. Uh, and we are here today to talk about data quality in big data environments. Uh, we will go through uh, some of these uh, uh, points of the agenda. Uh, uh, we will do some introduction of uh, the key aspects of data quality uh, problems that we are seeing in some of our customers. And then we go deep and to uh, explain a uh, real implementation of a uh, data quality engine that we, uh, that we have done in, in, in one project. Um, just uh, spend a few seconds to talk about the moment we are living in big data. Uh, we started a few years ago. Uh, we did some uh, lab testing at home, uh, hiring people, um, testing new technologies, and uh, gathering information and creating algorithms, and hopefully uh, you provided some results to, to your company. But today, I, I think uh, that we are living in a completely different moment. Um, we are in the moment of scaling this to the, to the whole enterprise. Some of the things that we are encountering in, 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 in our customers is that they are thinking, for instance, in how to scale and to deploy uh, platforms to uh, all, almost uh, new, almost the whole company, to new geographies. Uh, they, were, and they are thinking again, uh, as well how to uh, replace old technology that was in place for many years. And they are thinking as well in uh, giving all their employees and their, um, even their customers some of the insights and the data and the data that they are using in, in their operations. Um, just uh, to spend a uh, few seconds as, uh, again in, in, in the evolution that we did in big data, we started uh, doing some data lakes. Uh, we, faced, uh, then we then face, faced some of the problems related with uh, quality, security, and traceability. And then we look for some use cases to, to find uh, good insights and to provide some good results on the business. And now I think that the, the, we are really doing the transformation uh, thanks to big data adoption. For doing this transformation, I really believe you need at least four things. Uh, strategy, uh, you need uh, um, governance, you need a strong culture, and uh, you need as well uh, uh, embrace new uh, intelligence uh, and new um, um, technologies related with big data. For just uh, for, for recap a little bit, uh, strategy, you must think about what you want to become in this digital area. And you need as well to think about how you will uh, go through uh, all the steps that, uh, to, in order to have an adoption plan that will provide uh, intelligence to the company. Governance. Uh, you need governance not only for data. You probably have in place right now more than a thousand of algorithms that you have to control because they are working in real time. You need as well a flexible organization that will uh, adapt very well to changes. And uh, the only way to, to do that, um, for me, is the, the biggest challenge in this moment, is to have a strong culture. Only with a strong culture, you will uh, uh, put all these people working together and reach new level of capability, knowledge, and innovation. And as well, I, I think that you need to embrace new technologies such as AI. AI can really change the world, and, and, but you have to put AI in the really core of your operations, the moment of truth when you think about that, that you will have some kind of uh, critic decisions with customers, operations, risk, and so on. The point is that uh, we encounter and we do see very often that data quality is not on top of our priorities when we in many companies. Uh, if there is a kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe there is a kind of formal that can explain this to, to, to quite easily, 
But if you think in data quality, uh, is it acts as a multiplier or all the capability that you have to put together to master big data. If you don't have any data quality, you won't provide any impact on your business. That's why we really think that data quality must be on top of your priorities. Uh, data quality on big data uh, is something that you have to approach a little bit uh, in a different way. Uh, you need to think about many different signals that you can process in the digital life in order to have a single view, a single uh, a unique view of the reality. With all these signals, you can build a trusted view of this reality. Um, maybe you will use some redundant information, but it's something that you need to, uh, need to do in order to, to, to be confident of this reality. Um, we did encounter as well that many customers still think that data quality is something more related uh, to, um, to IT. I don't think that's the case. Only business users has the knowledge of understanding or of understand what a, a data quality problem can be solved and how to really understand a pattern uh, that can be very dangerous or potential uh, or providing potential business a potential uh, advantage to your business. Data quality tools are uh, quite behind of any big data tools. They are very oriented to structured information, but when you scale up, you don't, they don't work very, very well. So you have to consider that you must uh, do some kind of ad hoc development and to provide some kind of uh, um, uh, uh, interactive uh, tools in order to, to navigate through the data for those business users that was, uh, was mentioned before. Uh, another thing, algorithms and machine learning will help to fix and identify potential problems in big data. If you think, for instance, uh, in self-driving cars, most of the companies that are working in this domain are performing many tests, uh, fixing uh, information around you, and building uh, good knowledge about the real situation of the of the of the uh, and taking decisions uh, how to you must you must drive your your car but let's go back to to the present and uh, talk about a real implementation of a duality, uh, data quality engine in big data please david thank you nacho well, uh, my part is much more technical. I'm going to explain how to create a data quality engine once you already have a data lake. At the end of the presentation, I will also show how to create or to use the module of data quality we have in your current informational system or in a data warehouse you, you already have in case you still don't have a, a data lake in your company. The steps we follow were the, the following. The first one, this is our, what we understand is a data lake, the data lake and the surroundings, okay? In blue, you will find all the informational systems, the ETLs, the files, and the third-party systems, everything with data which is previous to our system. The integration layer, which is in yellow or orange, I think, uh, maybe yours or uh, from another part of the company. In Violet, I think, uh, the sandbox, notebooks, and marketplace, you will find all the, what we understand as analytics. Uh, in, some, in some data lakes, you will not find a marketplace, but in Indra, in, in Minsight, we, we will always work with, with that uh, with that module, which is uh, when we have uh, algorithms in production, we prepare them and put in a marketplace like in Google or Apple Store, and then uh, a customer or uh, another department in who already have the, the data lake can play the, the algorithm and, and well, use, use it. In pink, you will find all the presentation layer, BIs and portals. And in green, which is the matter of today, you will find the data lake itself. Maybe you have or not a, 
uh, non-SQL database. You will always have a government and orchestration system. And today's, uh, well, this presentation is about the ingestion and data quality system. This is where we started. Uh, most of the companies at this point uh, are, are in, well, at this situation. Uh, we all started here in Spain, in all the banks, in all the public administrations, uh, gathering information for informational systems and ETLs. That was the beginning. At that point, we had sometimes to create, uh, well, normalization systems, consolidation systems, but in most of the cases, the information we gathered was correct from the beginning and was easily to uh, gather into the data lake and, and put in production. The problem began when we started receiving uh, files, uh, third parties information, information from internet, non-structure, or uh, that we didn't have time to uh, functionally analyze before the ingestion. So we didn't know we, we, what we were uh, receiving. Uh, now I'm going to show you the real steps we follow when we created our data quality system. Uh, the first architecture is only a couple of ideas. I mean, uh, if you use simply common sense, you will realize that if you want a data quality engine, you need a place in which to store the rules, obviously. Uh, if you are doing big data, you will use a Spark engine and a place to store all the information that is common for everyone. The point is the metadata and the configurations. Uh, that is a system that can be in or out of the data lake, and that storage all the configurations of the uh, files, the rules, which rule applies to which file, to which field within the file. All that information is in this module of metadata and configurations. In the second version of the architecture, we realized we didn't want to depend on third parties. We didn't want anyone to orchestrate our solution. So we started using UCI, because we already have UCI in our cloud era. And we decided we didn't want to uh, depend on the information on or in files or in third parties in between to give us the information from the input and the output. Uh, the connection module and the publisher are, let's say, two sides of the same coin because ba uh, basically they, they have the same, the same technologies and they do the same. But sometimes, uh, as you all know, the APIs to connect our systems are not the APIs to, uh, to send the, to or to publish the information. In the third version of the architecture, uh, the previous one, by the way, went to production, it worked. The following version of the, of the system, we realized that, uh, well, we all know that when we process a file and process with data quality, check validations and so on, uh, a percentage of the information is, going, is not going to pass all, all, the, all the rules. Uh, at that point, we realized we had to uh, have a graphical interface made in Java. Uh, to manage the chaos, the, the elements that didn't pass all the, all the corrections. We also wanted to create a system with audit and a place uh, with a graphical interface in which we could manage all the rules. In the previous version, a developer or an architect had to change the rules. If a new rule appeared, we had to program it. Right now, I think that we have more than 300 kinds of rules that can receive a parameter and, and apply to much more, uh, much more rules. Uh, what you can see uh, in the part uh, below is the real first version of the uh, workflow of this uh, system. Uh, we also realized at any point that uh, some other uh, data quality systems didn't have the ability to um, manage the workflow of all the file and the transitions. Uh, here you can see, well, this is the connection module. The second uh, point is um, storage and uh, only uh, validation rules. The, second one, the third one, sorry, is uh, 
the self-remedy rules. I will talk about them later because our engine is able also to repair the data. The fourth one, uh, the hand, is uh, well manual changes. In case you have uh, rules and remediation rules, and you still have chaos in your in your file, you, you can repair them. And the publishment. Uh, why did we choose to have those five uh, points in, in 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 our workflow? Uh, because um, when we started uh, receiving files, uh, not all the uh, publishment services, I mean, the people who were going to receive our data weren't prepared for our data. So we started ingesting information, applying everything, but we uh, put the checkbox in the last one, that means don't publish. So we can manage all the workflow of our solution. The fourth and last version of the architecture uh, was increased thanks to a data discovery module. Uh, in most of the cases, when we receive a file or a third system communication, uh, they send us a functional or a business description, a functional design or, or whatever. But sometimes uh, we receive a file and they say, okay, ingest the file and send it so, to somewhere. Uh, uh, with a data discovery module, we use Oracle uh, Visual Analyzer and the discovery module, and we also have versions with R and Python for, uh, for the open source version of, of the data quality system. Uh, for example, with, uh, with, with that module, uh, if you don't have any information about a column, but uh, you see that the regular expression is this one of a uh, passport, a serial number of a car or whatever, the discovery uh, module will tell you. So at least you could be able to uh, put a little bit of rules, pre-checks to the file in order to process or pre-process the file and have uh, a start point. If we put some color to the, to the diagram, uh, as I said, well, it's simping because it was Oracle at the beginning, and after that it was, it was R and Python in the data discovery. The metadata and configurations, we have them in MongoDB because we already have uh, MongoDB in, in the first uh, client with, with this uh, system. And the government portal is an open source government portal uh, uh, implemented in, in Java. Now let's dig into the components of the solution. Well, the metadata and configurations I told you before. Rules, rules that apply to, to a file and, and, and so on. Uh, also, well, the workflow configuration and all that stuff. Uh, the rules, I think that after two years with this project, we have almost all the rules I can imagine. We have simple rules. This value must be this one. Uh, this variable must be that. Uh, simple validation in each SQL, uh, you know, regular expressions, uh, matching with master data. Um, I think that we cover all the, the rules we, we, we could imagine. Uh, we even can uh, invoke functions made in Java, R, Python, or even invoke third uh, uh, external services from third systems. So I, I think that we cover all, 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 I, all I can imagine, in, uh, at least in, from a validation point of view. Uh, we also have uh, self-remedy rules that can repair data. Uh, they are from very simple to very complex. I mean, for example, if you know uh, the address of someone and the city, maybe you can infer the postal code. This is a reparation. The postal code is not in the input file, but I can infer thanks to two fields that in this case are uh, well the, the address. And uh, finally, we also have uh, translation rules. The translation rules are uh, in case you, re you receive the same information from two systems. For example, imagine you have an SIP and an Oracle. Both send you a file about uh, well, the citizen, for example. In one file, uh, the gender is male, female. In the other is zero and one. 
And the final system that is going to, where you are going to publish is uh, they are expecting F and M, not neither female, male, nor a uh, zero or one. We can also translate. This is not a translation system, but we can translate codes from place to place. Uh, the, storage, uh, the storage system is simply a big data system. You know, raw data output. Uh, some other presenters will say trusted or other names to the data part, but it's when the information is clean, raw is the input, and well, the output is only when the publisher does need uh, a different uh, format for the, for the information. Uh, the rules engine, uh, well, it has three submodules. Uh, the biggest part is the batch engine that runs with all the information uh, with the biggest files we can, we can process. Uh, the pre-validator is something we didn't find in any data quality system in the market. Uh, most of the places we found that when a data analyst or uh, any kind of person who, who runs the data quality application, uh, to they told us that uh, in most of the cases, if you want to pre-check just one single uh, quality rule in a file, you, you need to replay all the file. In that case, we have a pre-validator. The pre-validator is, is not the part of the engine uh, as it cannot validate or repair data. It only pre-validates in the online, in the government portal. It shows you if the rule is going to apply or not and what will be the, the result. And the pseudo real-time or on-demand engine is in case you have, for example, you process a file, 10 million of records, and only 100 didn't pass, you can run in the government uh, solution, in online, in the Java part, the, rem the remaining ones, one you have a, a manually corrected them or, or apply any, any new rule you, you didn't you didn't pass at the beginning. Well, the connection and the publisher modules are almost the same, same technologies you can see. The only difference is one publish and the other connects to the information. Uh, the data quality system, uh, as I said before, it was created only for uh, managing the OKs and chaos. But uh, we start giving it uh, new dimensions. Uh, the ability to pre-validate, manage rules. Well, it's the complete front end of, of the solution. And the discovery module is only in case you receive a file, and you don't have information, or you have a, uh, only a, a small number of rules, and you want to check if there is anything you, you, you missed. Uh, now I'm going to show you the first implementation. And you will see a lot of weird things, but it was the the, the first implementation. That, that was the, the environment we have. This is the, the uh, generic data lake, as I saw uh, in, in the beginning, and that's what we had. Okay, the data lake had was a Cloudera, as uh, non-SQL we had a uh, MongoDB. Well, the informational systems were SAP and Oracle, well, you can see over there. We didn't have a marketplace nor a portal on, on the beginning. The BI was in Obi. That was what we had the day we started the project. And that was the first version of the data quality engine. If you see, we only process files and information from the informational system, the data warehouse we, we had. And mostly the connections were through the Oracle uh, Manager File Transfer or directly via Scoop. We have other versions now with Spark, but that was the beginning. The ingestion mode, over the ingestion mode, which is a node out of the data lake uh, was uh, deployed the connection and publisher module. And the weird thing for all of you could be that you can see that the rules, the files, the to be reviewed, that means the chaos, are in Oracle. And it was because our first version of the data quality engine was uh, deployed in a uh, Hive. And as you all know, Hive is for, well, you can read, but you cannot write. You can write if you uh, move all the, uh, the package and the CSV behind the partition. But uh, if you wanted to uh, change just one record, you, need a, you needed a relational behind. So the first version was like this one. Uh, the capabilities of, of the first version were very simple. It could only work with batch. We didn't have uh, an online version or 
uh, any government portal. Uh, as you can see, all the administration was uh, made through the, the own interface of Cloudera. And that was all. It worked. It was fine. It was very fast. But uh, we knew we had to, to evolve the, the solution. Uh, the current version is this one. The connection module adds a uh, Spark and the publisher. Most of the storage system, depending on the version, could be directly in HDFS, but uh, right now we always put all the information in Kudu. The data discovery module could be used if you have an, an Oracle or, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever uh, the, the discovery you, you have in your company, you can use it. We have or we use an uh, open source version in most of the cases with R and Python because we, we have the same results. Uh, the metadata and the configuration is still in MongoDB. We could move to Kudu, obviously, and we did in, the, in another version. And, well, all the government and orchestration uh, portal, well, uses basically Angular and, and Java. What are the new uh, abilities or capacities of, of the system? Well, now, besides of validations and remediation, we can enrich and make advanced uh, repairs. Uh, besides all the online part, the pre-validator, the online launch, uh, or the creation and management of new rules can be done in the online, in the, in the web portal. Besides, the uh, administration is full right now, the audit is full. Do you remember all the steps of our workflow? We know exactly what we received, what was the file after the rules, what was the file after the, the self-revelation rules, so we can come back to 20 point. We can audit everything. Uh, we also have a statistics, a quality statistics, how, much, how many now, uh, registers passed all the, the steps, uh, we can even stop the, the publishment. If, for example, a 20% of the registers are KO, then don't publish. We can do that with the government portal. Obviously, the creation and configuration of rules is also included in, in the new version. Those are other versions we also have of the uh, data, quality, oh, sorry, data quality system. We have versions in which everything is based in, in big data. We don't have a MongoDB. And we also have a version which is, uh, in case your company doesn't have a, a full uh, data lake, you can just add uh, some uh, nodes of Spark, use the application, but uh, run it uh, with a MongoDB as a non-SQL, non-SQL, sorry, or, uh, well, an Oracle, for example. In both cases, uh, the, the important point is that the engine is developed in, in Spark. What are the results and the future we, we see? Well, the results uh, are very important. Uh, the first file we process with the first version of the data quality engine uh, was uh, compared with the previous ETL that was working for the same job. Uh, they needed, uh, as you can see, five days for what we needed, six minutes. So obviously, the, the, uh, moving a solution of data quality to uh, a big data, uh, it's more than, more than useful. Uh, regarding the, uh, the improvement in the data quality, uh, after five or 10 files, we realized that at least a third part of any file, it's always corrupted or has chaos or simply didn't pass all the, all the rules. Uh, thanks to the auto remedy, uh, the self remedy system, and well, the manual workflow and the and well, all the tools that now we provide, uh, the the quality of the files is almost 100 percent. We have also collateral benefits of the solution. First, thanks to the discovery modules, we have less functional dependency because we can try to process the files at the moment they come without waiting for the functional design. I, I'm not saying that we don't need functional analysis. We, or we still need them, and we will for a long time. Uh, but in this case, uh, if we receive a file without a shape, we don't know the columns, the, the values, 
we can pass through the discovery module and try to process it. Uh, the real time pre-validations uh, were something we didn't find in any other uh, data quality system. And more than new rules, as you can see there, uh, the new types of processable files, it's something we didn't find in any place. I mean, right now, as we have a module with MongoDB, uh, we can also process a JSON or an XML. All the systems we find for data quality only process relational information, columnar uh, CSVs. <coughs> Well, the self-remedy mu uh, module is uh, common, all the data quality systems have, but we think ours is, is better. And the workflow control uh, allow us to, uh, to stop the workflow uh, at any time. What do we see at the future? Well, more data quality, only because of the, the speed. More uh, data quality and ETLs move to big data systems. And probably the next step is also the master data management uh, systems move to the to the big data. Uh, I, I, I think that is the natural step. And uh, well, uh, the truth is that all the data quality systems or engines we, we find in the market, they, they well, you must pay per record, per file, or, or whatever. And for all the companies that already have uh, a big data platform to implement a system like this one uh, uh, will be well. They will save uh, a lot of money doing doing that. Uh, besides, we see that uh, we are finding uh, new rules that no one expected. <coughs> Not functional rules, but real rules we find in the files. And well, those are takeaway points of this uh, session. And I think that we are ready for your questions. Thank you. Any question? No question. One night questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.